Hello, my name is Bethan Myers. I'm a haematologist at the University Hospitals of Leicester. I've been asked to spend a few minutes to run through poster presentation of biomarkers in the mast cell disorders that we presented at a recent conference. Let's have a look at each section separately. So this was a poster presentation at the British Society of Haematology meeting earlier this year. And the topic presented was the utility of prostaglandins, DM, D2 and F2 alpha and N-methylhistamine urine measurements uh, across the mast cell disorders. So what are the mast cell disorders? Well, they include systemic and cutaneous mastocytosis, monoclonal and non-clonal mast cell activation syndrome, and the most recently described hereditary alpha tryptosemia. When we're thinking about biomarkers, serum tryptase is the easiest to measure because it's a stable substance. It usually is raised in systemic mastocytosis, monoclonal MCAS, and hereditary alpha tryptosemia but is often normal in non-clonal MCAS. Abnormalities in the levels of the urinary prostaglandins and N-methylhistamine are an alternative way to demonstrate abnormalities of the mast cell activity for all of the mast cell disorders. As most mast cell mediators deteriorate quickly out of the body, we are only able to measure a few of the many hundred documented this cartoon is taken from the premier journal, Blood, recognising that all the mast cell disorders have an association between them. Prostaglandins are present in preformed granules in mast cells and may be activated either by IgE or non-IgE mechanisms. Prostaglandin D2 is unstable, has a very short half-life and is broken down to primarily prostaglandin F2-alpha very quickly. The prostaglandins are also um, secreted intermittently over a 24-hour period and therefore a 24-hour urine collection is the ideal collection. Although if a patient is symptomatic, a spot sample may be informative. Mast cells themselves are also heterogeneous, not all contain the same granules. They are complex, multifunctional master cells of the innate immune system and line the passageways and cavities in the body. The main aim of this study was to assess urinary levels of prostaglandins and N-methylhistamine in all the mast cell disorders and also to compare their levels across the mast cell disorders. In addition, we assessed the importance of keeping samples chilled throughout the collection and in transit. So we used a local database of cases to um, access information on the urinary tests. These were available in 94 of the 145 patients who had been tested. The large majority of patients had non-clonal MCAS. The baseline tryptase varied from an average of 3.6 to 46.2 in uh, systemic mastocytosis patients. Those with the activation subtypes had the most symptoms. There was a wide age range included in this study. So this table um, summarises the results. And if we look firstly at the prostaglandin results, you can see that in the systemic mastocytosis group, all patients had at least single positivity uh, present of prostaglandins and 100% of patients had positive N-methylhistamine in the urine. With the monoclonal MCAS, 
which was a very small number of patients. 50% had triple positivity and 50% had double positivity, but none demonstrated N-methyl histamine. The non-clonal MCAS patients represented the largest group in the sample. Half of these had um, single positivity of prostaglandins and then a further quarter had double positivity with a small percentage demonstrating triple positivity and a 15% rate of N-methyl histamine detection. Hereditary alpha-tryptosemia demonstrated positivity in 60% of prostaglandin tests, with the majority being double or single positivity. We, dem we did not demonstrate any positivity in the N-methyl histamine group. Cutaneous mastocytosis being limited to the skin did not uh, demonstrate any abnormalities in the urinary tests. So then thinking about those that were negative for either prostaglandins or N-methyl histamine, they were generally the spot samples rather than 24-hour collection samples. And when these were repeated as a 24-hour collection, they uh, were positive suggesting that um, we had missed the release of the substances with a spot sample. The next part of this slide um, gives a breakdown of which prostaglandins were positive in the single and double positive prostaglandin tests. The analysis of the N-methyl histamine results showed positivity with all of the mastocytosis patients, but negativity in some of the groups. It could be that the samples were too small um, in terms of the patient number to demonstrate this. So in conclusion, all of the different mast cell disorders, apart from cutaneous mastocytosis, demonstrated similar abnormalities, but at different degrees. And this would be because the mastocytosis patients have a much larger number of mast cells, hence releasing more prostaglandin and N-methyl histamine. We found that repeating samples, keeping them chilled and taking them over a 24 hour period significantly improved outcome in positive results. In conclusion, therefore, this study supports the similarities in biochemical abnormalities across the mast cell disorders, whether they be mast cell activation or mastocytosis or hereditary alpha-tryptosemia. A slide of um, some relevant ref references.